there we were and we turned it out and Columbia put it out on the market thinking Firesign Theater, they're a rock and roll group. I mean, you know, everybody else was a rock and roll group with a funny name. We were released in our release on that in February of 1968, Winning for the Electrician or Someone Like Him was released by Columbia Records and in that same release was The Peanut Butter Conspiracy, The Chambers Brothers, and Moby Grape. It's funny because Firesign Theater came on the tail end, uh, well actually maybe 10 years after a time in our culture when the, one of the biggest things going was comedy albums, you know, and everybody listened to comedy albums and, uh, you know, Bob Newhart and Shelley Berman and Alan Sherman and, uh, um, and Firesign Theater were, was, I don't know if you'd call it an outgrowth of that, but it was, um, it was, you know, the, the, co the idea of a comedy album taken to a different, different level, you know, and also I think very, I think they very specifically did it as audio comedy, you know, in other words, like a Bob Newhart album which was kind of like something you could, it was like a stand-up act, but it was on his album, whereas um, uh, Firesign Theater was, the, it, it seems like they, they mixed it, that, that a person would be sitting and listening to it, and it, it would be kind of seeping into their uh, brains. We were doing something different. It was movies in your mind. It was this kind of audio theater. A lot of what we did, when we went into Columbia Records first, we were literally producing on, on mono, then two track, then four track, then eight track, working our way up through those first three or four albums. Uh, thanks to a guy named Bill Dremel and a, someone who's no longer with us named Ralph Cross, who took us under their wing, who were union uh, engineer guys at, uh, at Columbia Records and just did endless hours with us of figuring out, oh well, can we put this voice through the horn of a Leslie speaker? Right. How are we gonna mic this? How are we gonna do, how are we gonna literally invent yeah. filters because none of this stuff existed electronically at the time. Yeah. And these people were very, very much our collaborators and always have been. We have always been kind of, uh, you don't wind up working with us from an engineering and production standpoint and, and unless you sort of become as nuts as we are. And we are so nuts that we, we, mini, we micromanage every aspect of all our recordings. A friend of mine uh, once said, a friend of mine who's in commercial radio, syndicated radio, after listening to me tell about how we were working on some project, stared at me and said, oh my God, he said, like you're some, you're like some Japanese samurai artists that are being set aside by the government and sitting making swords. You Feels know, like that. Molecule yeah, by good. molecule. It's good, it's good. <laughs> molecule by molecule. And I, and I thought to myself at the time, how have we existed Molecules. in the commercial world? How we have haven't. we in fact managed to sell records? And oh. you know, why in fact are we still sitting here? Yeah. And it's a, because I think our engineers have always laughed with us. We tend to try and fold everybody that's working with us into this, into the fantasy and somehow that's how we work. The folding everybody into your work is a key thing and in, and in my professional life in radio everywhere, that's, that's always, I've always said, that's the fire sign style. What I'm going to teach you is the fire sign style. It is inclusive, not exclusive. We are inclusive and that's what makes it work. That's very unusual in a hierarchical world to be inclusive. And, uh, and I think that's, that, is, that really marks us as a, as a style, inclusiveness. The first album didn't do well commercially. Nobody's really heard of it. At this time in life, there is no FM radio. All that's on the FM radio are things like Pacifica radio, if you're lucky enough to live in Houston or Berkeley or, or Los Angeles, and uh, Czechoslovakian bomba music. And so we're backstage, and God, what, what, were, we, what were we doing? We're, we're doing, doing Freak the, for a Week, or oh, no, 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 we're no, doing, we're doing Giant Rat of Samoa? Giant, Giant Rat, by the Light of the Silvery, we called it And uh, Peter and I were waiting space. backstage mm -hmm. for, to go on, and he leans over to me and says, you know, I think I, I think I figured out the title for the next album. I said, what is it? He said, how can you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere at all? <laughs> I said, Peter, it's too long. <laughs> that's the truth. That's, that's, that's where it came. Yeah, he's you know, always a good editor.